Hello and welcome. This will be an introduction video to Kamikaze 0.8.0. I am now going to boot this super micro system from the USB stick and start up several virtual machines to demonstrate the system. We will be going over how to do an initial setup of a open work based routing appliance inside of the virtual machine environment several Ubuntu 14.04 virtual machines. So from the grub menu we will choose to load Zen into RAM from the RAM root selection. <coughs> During this process, the operating system is being loaded into the computer's main memory. The advantage of this is the computer needs no other disks once the operating system has started fully. So here we see Zen starting up. Zen is actually very small. It sits there and controls access to PCI resources. Things like the video adapter, uh, network adapters, other things like that. In this case, Domain Zero, the root virtual machine, um, unless I go and tinker around with the kernel boot settings I, to exclude a particular PCI device from being assigned to Domain Zero, Domain Zero will end up with every single available device on the machine. As it boots up, we see here that it adds every physical network port that the R0. Now System D has started up and we should reach a login prompt shortly. There's the login prompt. Importantly, we now wait a few moments. If the GUI has been... I don't think it will actually change it. Ah, there it goes. Okay. And here we are at the desktop. First things first, we need to get some information on this computer. Um, you don't necessarily need to do this during instance some of the feature set that Kamikaze can provide. Uh, first thing that I should mention is running the installer is, well, I'll just put it this way. It's not something that I generally test, nor do I generally test running this from optical boot media, as in burning to a DVD-ROM, CD-ROM, Blu-ray, what have you. Um, for the most on uh, um, the directory of the machine. <clears throat> and So let's actually take a look at that in detail. I open up Now we should see the domain zero virtual machine is into it. Now if we go XL info, and actually here let me just kind of move this up and drag this down so we get a whole nice long output. We'll see we actually have 16. virtual machines that is not allocated by Domain Zero. Um, one of the nice things about Zen is it does have support for memory ballooning. It is not always a good idea, and it's generally better to start. The reason for this is when Linux starts up, it events. 
the less system memory you have, the less memory it will allocate for this, and the more um, useful memory um, I, I should mention that any better FS volumes are going to be mounted automatically if they have a label. Give them a label. That said, generally having them mounted will not be a problem because by default they will be mounted under mount better FS USB. Well, in, in this case, it will take the label of the partition and create a, a, uh, a mount point for it. So, by going through the disks tool from the desktop, this is run in sudo mode, and if you click on one of these links... But before I do that, I just want to make one little note. Uh, I'm going to go over here to accessories and open up the text editor. Because one really annoying thing that this thing does that drives me nuts is um, it will create a backup. And while I'm at it, I'm just going to you know, turn on a couple of these features and maybe enable a couple of bases. I find it really useful, especially uh, uh, the embedded ter uh, terminal, uh, the external tools. Um, let's see. Uh, the Python console can be useful if you are constantly dealing with Python, and we have a large amount of Python packages installed here, so we'll just go with that. And then you can access them, I believe, through the bottom panel here. So now we have a uh, term color profile may not be the greatest, but for the most part, um, it works quite well. Now the Python console is actually I uh, try to get, uh, oh, I guess this is not IPython based, so I don't have access to help and super help. Oh, well. Either way, uh, as you can see, you know, it's quite useful. We have a full pro um, uh, somewhere. I forget where that is. I know it's available. Uh, let me just double check here. Code Comment, color scheme picker. One thing to find out. Let's uh, try this. Uh, so I guess I'll go out to the root, uh, and we'll try user local bin and and see what kind of uh, useful things in here. Like uh, let's take a look at Excelmon since we're going to be running that next. Okay, so we do have syntax highlighting here. Uh, so XLMon is a very, very input and provided over a JSON endpoint. So let's just start that up right now. Uh, 5346. Uh, I guess not. The browser. You can already see how useful having a desktop environment is just to be able to get access to some of this stuff very quickly and easily. Instead of having to curl this, we can just open it up. Now this is the uh, Midori browser. It's based on WebKit, so it should be fairly similar to how Chrome uh, it doesn't have a lot of extra stuff, but the one thing that I did make sure was enabled was the fact that it had advertisement blocking built in. This is a server system, and one of the largest infection vectors of malware is advertisements on web pages. Not the 190 megabyte monstrosity that Chromium is. That also being said, you can just app get install Chromium. This is running from RAM, the package will be installed into RAM, and the next time the system reboots, 
the entire thing will be thrown away and you'll have to download it again as we'll start the USB stick. So now that we've kind of gotten through some of that, kill 46 and which should uh, knock that off and uh, let's just open up a new tab here and exile mon sh <clears throat> there we go so we'll just leave that kind of running in the background we'll pull this and I leave him over here and refresh this periodically as we start up virtual machines now as I mentioned um, so uh, um, I've, I've already opened up the, uh, the, the super user um, uh, file manager into this view and we'll go into the VMs folder. I've already pre-prepared this. Uh, it, it, this, is, this is better FS. You can see that you know 9.6 gigabytes is free out of 11 gigabytes. We'll reuse it. Each of these folders is not actually a folder, it is a sub-volume. And uh, this is the root sub-volume, and each of these uh, demo machines were actually cloned off of this. So this is a really easy way of, of keeping storage space down. Um, this is the 2GB image that was used as the root. It's a very small open work virtual machine, which will ask comes with uh, Kamikaze. If you actually look on the device that it boots from, if you get the uh, the USB image, you will find a template folder on the USB stick, and you'll find a copy of both OpenWare and a uh, very, very uh, shrunk Ubuntu 64-bit 1404.03 release. It is uh, um, uh, I've marked this uh, the, this uh, configuration file is executable, which uh, we'll right click on this and say we'll show owner. So we can see that's owned by root, and we'll show permissions. And we see that the permission, the uh, execute permission is available for this. It's uh, also available for the copied off of a uh, um, uh, FAT32 partition here. But marked executable. Uh, we have it hash bang line here, which will pass it to Excel Create. And uh, let's uh, go see the uh, result of that. So if we go to mount, better FS, uh, USB stick white, VMs, and this one is a, the open word. You can see that uh, Excel Mon SH terminated because of the kill command that I sent it. Um, and so now if we go uh, dot slash open word 1505 dot conf, whack enter, we'll see parsing config as it's passed over to Excel, and Excel will have created the virtual machine. And if we is it will try to keep extraneous information from from building up too bad. And what I mean by that is if we go Excel list. Okay, we see this, right? So if we go Excel list dash dash help, one of the things that it will say is dash dash long, and it will output all VM details. But what it doesn't tell you is when you choose the dash dash long option, the default format happens to be JSON. And it's really, really wordy. Uh, so what I did is uh, I, I wrote a little uh, script using JQ, JQ uh, which is uh, cat uh, user local bin, uh, what was it, that's, uh, uh, it was in there, I guess it was Xamon, yeah. Oh, that's not quite what I want to do. Uh, no, less won't do syntax highlighting. Uh, nano. Nano will do syntax highlighting. Um, XLMon. Oh, okay, it looks that I... Oh, right, right, that's... That 
is git running vms. There we go. Which is this crazy command right here. But uh, 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 it'll it'll just sort a lot of unnecessary information uh, out of the um, the the or display. So and not only that, we kind of uh, um, uh, break this up into easier to digest chunks. Um, if you look at that output from uh, Excel list, you can see that it. it, it in some cases, it has some constructs like this list. It does not work out very well when you're dealing with a web context. And in this case, we really don't care which CPUs, uh, what the number of the individual CPUs that has been assigned to this virtual machine really was. Um, however, we, we do care about certain things like the amount of memory, the disks that were attached to it, the MAC address, the, uh, the, the network adapter was attached to it. Now that's kind of interesting. Huh. I would have thought that that would have gotten linked to the Zenbro. Oh, right. I don't have any network cables connected right now. Uh, okay, so... Uh, but uh, for the moment, it will not. Um, maybe I'll do this demonstration again with a network cable connected. Maybe I won't. <clears throat> but uh, let's just get back to it. Um, so I will bring this back down to its normal size. Slide this over. And let's start starting up Ubuntu virtual machines. So Ubuntu demo one. And there's just a description. You, there's actually quite a few places that you can for my It is two, which means if you do not have, you probably will not be able to boot this image. And it does not have a legacy grub.lst file in there or menu.lst file in there. Uh, so gen generally, the old PB grub probably won't work either. You may or may not have luck with PyGrub. I haven't really tried to start up this virtual machine. So Ubuntu demo oneconf and then we'll refresh this and we'll say, oh hey, you know, there there's demo one. And again, it's not assigned to a bridge. Um, when I tested this on the other machine that actually did have a uh, active network connection, it did to be able to record all of this for you without and, and and be able to get you all of the boot screens and everything else. This is not a virtual machine. This is a real computer uh, with a real AMD Radon video card in it. And that was the only way I was actually able to get 1080p output from the BIOS. But so let's go start up a couple more, shall we? Um, I, I have not actually tried this, so I'm going to try it right now. Ubuntu into dem um actually hmm nah no I was gonna try up all of them at the same time but now that I think about it that just seems like a bad idea so let's start up machine number two and we'll see that that guy shows up in there as well now we have four uh, uh, machines running because of course the, the, the root domain, this whole graphical interface, the, the machine that runs it, is domain zero. Um, let's try bringing up number three. It is so nice just to be able to execute these configuration files and not have to worry about writing a whole script to start them. Um, that really kind of made this a lot easier. Ubuntu Demo 4. And dot slash Ubuntu Demo Demonstration.
One of the reasons that I named the uh, disk image U64 uh, is I have a tab of tab completing folders uh, and files. See, uh, say dot slash UB and tab complete. Uh, and if the file of the disk image actually had Ubuntu in its name, <laughs> it would try to tab complete both of them. And that generally ends up to be kind of a nightmare. All right, so uh, there's all of the virtual machines running. And Excel list so that we can see that uh, they are both in order. Now, one thing that I will note here, um, libvirt bin is installed and available. However, through libvirt bin, you will not see any of the running virtual machines in Excel. Libvirt will actually access Xen at a lower level than Excel. So keep that in mind if you happen to uh, try to uh, deal with this in that manner. Uh, libvirt bin can be really great, especially if you've got a copy of Vert Manager hanging around. Uh, you could just as easily use it on another system. Uh, one of the other things that I should note is uh, Kamikaze has x to go but the server, which means you can remote desktop into this very efficiently and get access to this desktop from even a Windows machine, um, and effectively manage the computer. Uh, and all of the virtual machines on it, because, of course, um, we can go uh, uh, by these, uh, 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 well, console. And there we go. Name and password for these is root, and uh, <laughs> the old favorite, password. So be very, very mindful when you expose these to the Internet and don't do it by default. SSH passwords are disabled, and roots especially, and since root is the only uh, user on the box, that means you will not be able to access this remotely without adding a, uh, a public key to uh, .ssh uh, authorized keys in the uh, home folder. So P-A-S-S-W-O-R-D. Ubuntu console. I'm willing to bet it's still kind of uh, uh, flailing about here because I'm trying to run off of these from a poor little USB 2.0 stick. Um, it's a Patriot memory 16 gigabyte, and it's not exactly the. Just do not be alarmed when you notice some somewhat surprising lags in this. I, I've, I've tested this from an SSD and a real hard drive. Those lags just go away. It, it, it's only because this thing can do between 2 and 10 megabytes a second. It's really slow and pokey. So, um, but yeah, you know, here we are. We don't have network at the moment because uh, normally what should happen is uh, the open work machine, well, the open work VM will come up and attach to the, the main virtual machine bridge. And in doing so, it will provide a DHCP server that the rest of the virtual machines will go ahead and get an IP address from. By default, this is going to be 192.168. Home network in 192.168.1, because you could manage to goop something up there. But, uh, you know what? Here, let's... Um, uh, I, 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 there, there's actually no particular reason to be sitting in this Ubuntu one, so I'm just going to shut it down, just so you can see the gap between the machines. Um, and by the way, not the actual physical machine. And we get kicked out back to the console. So if we go on Excel list now, we'll see there's actually a gap between, um, you know, 5 and 7 in the IDs here as uh, uh, total item is 10 here, where if we refresh that, now we've only got 9. One of the reasons why we have a total items count because the IDs may not necessarily be sequential. Very important to know that if you're dealing with some kind of a uh, um, uh, interaction with the system from something else. 
But let's just get into the uh, open work console, which isn't too hard. Um, oh, I think it's just stuck trying to get access to the network. <laughs> uh, you can actually get that key. Um, so hold down control and hit this key, and it will break you out of the Zen console and back to your uh, normal console. So I'm going to show you something here. Um, let's just say that this virtual machine hung um, Excel list. And so, yeah, open word is just hung. So Excel shut down, you know, Ubuntu demo 7 for this example. And like, okay, so let's say Ubuntu Demo 7 doesn't, is refusing to shut down. It, it's hung, it's doing something. Um, you know, maybe it's out of memory killer or ran and it's, it's in the middle of trying to do a PostgreSQL uh, write to disk or something like that. Um, last way of being able to take a shotgun to something, and that is XL destroy open world. And that will forcibly break the virtual machine and just completely shut it down. So if we go XL list now, we will see that PI that ID one is just totally gone now. Now that said, let's um, uh, Ethernet cable real quick. Alright, I've got an Ethernet cable. Let me plug it into the machine. ...of a physical network adapter. So, um, IP adder... Is the okay? So the bridge is up, and it says it's lower is up, but no carrier, no carrier. Okay, so we have one of those. We have a carrier there. Now, if we go here, does that so open work? Now that we have a network connection, uh, okay. BSCTL uh, list port Zenbro. P20 through P26. Um, so, you know what? I'm just going to say uh, if down Zenbro. I, I think this is probably going to destroy all the VIPs, uh, the virtual interfaces, but uh, whatever. If up. Let's see if they come back. So, uh, list, um, so, XO, destroy, actually, one of the things that I can do is I can go cd dot dot, and I can go XL, destroy, Ubuntu, demo, question mark, I believe, and it should kill all of them off. Ah, uh, such shame. Oh well. I thought I just killed eight. No, I killed seven. Okay. So, Damo is uh, uh, roasty toasty. So, and openwork1505.com. And this should be um, machine ID 10, I believe. 
but what I'll do here is I'll go Excel console open work. I wonder if it actually get merged to that switch. No, it did not. Huh. Okay, well I'll have to double check the uh, switch configuration. I should get a little prompt in here in a moment. Um, press F. Huh. Well, either way. Um, XL destroy open. List. Everybody's closed, and we can see that we are back down to domain zero and ID zero with one total item. So that's pretty much it for production of running the zero dot eight dot zero, also known as. Uh, Thanks for watching. Have a good day. Right, let's see. Quit out of this. Quit out of this. Quit out of this. Quit out of that. And finally, shut down. Bye-bye.